Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome back to The Witcher 3. Honor in the fatherland. Horse hit some sort of invisible wall there, but that's no matter. We can always walk across this bridge. And eventually, yep, here's a gate. Halt! No passage. Case of the plague surface in the city or something. The plague? Uh, no. We're to not let folk in the city. It's in order, so I don't. Unless someone's got a pass. What kind of pass are we talking about? Well, a normal one. A transit pass. Who issues them? How should I know? I'm a lowly soldier. Who ordered the city gates closed? Word is the king himself. Doesn't want paupers and refugees pissing all over his beautiful city. Apart from which, when folk can go hither and thither, always a chance some spy will slink through. This way, spies got it harder. So, no pass, no passage. Farewell. I mean, I do have a pass, but it's kind of rubbish. Also, I can just do this. Jump into the water, swim across. Nobody says or does anything. It's great. Let you just talk to this guy about how uh, spies can't slink through when the gates are closed. and Presumably he just walked over to the edge of the bridge, watched Geralt jump into the water and start swimming. Just shrugged and went back to his uh, gate. I didn't have orders to follow him down there. Screw it. So yeah, here we are in Oxenfurt. And if I can just find a uh, waypoint marker, a road marker, I know there's one along the docks right here somewhere. Oh, yep, sure enough, Oxenfurt Harbor. Yes, now I can bypass the, uh, the blockade whenever I want using fast travel. But before that, we... Yeah, yeah. Before that, we do have some business here in Oxenfurt. In this building, looks like. If I can find the front door. Bound to be around here somewhere. Oh, yeah, the notice board. Should probably look at that before I leave. Bunch of merchants here, but because uh, most of them don't have icons... So, uh, they don't sell anything Geralt is interested in. I'm beginning to think that the door isn't around here. Halt! You there? Please wait! You're Geralt of Rivia, are you not? Well, apparently something is here. Depends who's asking. Revenue and customs for occupied Tamaria, Dorian branch, represented by yours truly. Deputy Tax Enumerator, Walter Moore Mitty. Honored, I guess. What seems to be the problem? In brief, undeclared income. Excuse me? We've had reports, numerous, that over the last month you've come into a great deal of coin. Quickly. So quickly it's raised suspicions. But we're in Redania. I get how that might have happened. Be glad to clear them up. Profession? Witcher. Monster Slayer. Hmm. Sole proprietorship. Service sector. Type of services rendered. Rat pest monster removal. Moving on. Have you at any time engaged in the wholesale trade of rawhide in the White Orchard area? Have you sold a bunch of hides? Is some kind of joke? Of course not. Right. Next. During the current fiscal year, have you engaged in the acquisition of bivalves with the express intention of selling the pearls therein? Even if I have, what's wrong with that? Article 86, Section 3 of the Tax Code. Whosoever purchases goods at an unseemly low price to take advantage of the seller's ignorance shall be subject to a fine equaling 200% of the earnings from any such a transaction. Sound familiar? And now, please answer. Have you or have you not dealt in said pearls? Well, I haven't bought any clams, so... 
No, never done anything of the sort. Witcher's honor. Now, for the final question, have you ever unlawfully acquired another man's movable goods? Chattels? Hmm, meaning? Oh, a meaning? Have you ever waltzed into someone's home and taken something without their permission? Oh, that, yeah, I've done a ton of that. But I'm just gonna lie to you. Gotta be kidding. The Witcher's Code forbids it. I'm pleased to hear you abide by your guilds by laws. Now, if you could wait for one moment, compare column B to table 7. Apply the rate for confirmed childless bachelors, a tax credit of 7.3% for practitioners of hazardous professions. It adds up to the crown. I say, good sir, you are exceptionally upstanding. It'd be rude to disagree. In these times, such civic virtue is a rarity. It must be commended, rewarded. Here. Well, what's this? A diploma. I bestow on you the title of taxpayer in good standing. I'd suggest you frame it, hang it in a place of honor. Congratulations. So as you may have noticed there, the key to that little random encounter is that you can lie to the tax man and he will believe you and even reward you for being such a good taxpayer. Anyway, found the door. I'm looking for Tamara, the Bloody Baron's daughter. Your brother said I'd find her here. Voitex sent you, sir. How else would I know she was here? Wait a moment. I'll fetch her straight away. You're looking for me, and who might you be? My father sends you. Yeah, to see if you're still alive, and well. I'm Geralt of Rivia. I'm quite alive and extraordinarily well, Geralt of Rivia. Better than I've ever been in this rotten life of mine, and now that you've seen me, I bid you farewell. Wait. We've nothing more to talk about. Your father's a vile man. You're angry and bitter. Can't blame you. Why do you help him then? Why did you take this job? Because he knows something about someone dear to me. Promised to tell me if I found you and your mother. Got it. A bit of blackmail. Just his style. Well, now you've found me, you can tell him I'm alive and I'm never coming back. Before I agreed to look for you, your father told me his version of events. Tell me yours. Mine? It's dull as life amidst the swamps. My earliest memories are of a drunken father lying under the stairs, caked in mud and clutching a bottle. Next dozen years, pretty much the same. Father would drink, disappear for days, then come home in a rage and send furniture flying. Thank the gods for war, I was glad every time they sent him off. And the quarrels. I remember him screaming at mum, the thuds as he beat her, then her sobbing. I'd hide under my bed and long for silence. That's the long and short of it. Multiply by 19 and there you have my life. Finally, we'd had enough, Mum and me. He crossed the line and we fled. I don't mean to pry, but I know your mother had a miscarriage. His doing? He shoved her, she fell, that's how it started. We were alone, no one to help, blood everywhere. Worst night of my life. Sorry. Must have been hard for you both. Mum was in shock. She was raving that it was better this way, that she never wanted the child. Must have had a fever. She was losing blood the whole time. She didn't want the child? Said she'd sooner cut open her guts than bear another child from his seed. Wojtek claims your mother had strange marks on her hands, and that a monster dragged her into the woods. That true? We were riding towards the river. Suddenly, Mum cried out, bent over, almost fell off her horse. I rode up to her and saw something strange. Her hands were on fire. And then that 
creature leapt from the woods. I don't know what it was, but it roared so fierce my nose bled. I saw it topple trees. I've never been so scared in my life. And that, that thing grabbed my mum and disappeared into the woods. I wanted to turn back, go after them, but the, the horses panicked. Now I don't even know if she's alive. What will you do now? Find my mum. You realize that might not be that easy. Don't worry, I'm not daft enough to believe I can do it alone. I've got some new friends now. Powerful friends. They'll help me. Who? Who are these friends, if it's not a secret? No secret. Heard of the Church of the Eternal Fire? A priest helped me contact the Redanian witch hunters. Righteous, brave men. They'll help me. Hence the candlesticks in your room. So you believe in the eternal fire? Once the heat of the fire has set your heart aflame, it gives you strength and leads you down the path of truth for the rest of your life. I hope it'll bless you with its warmth one day. Thanks. Thing is, fire's tricky. It's easy to get burned. What about your father? Who? Oh, him. I don't care. I won't go back to him. That bit of my life? Forgotten it already. Well, well. <coughs> a witcher. Never thought the Baron would stoop to hiring a monster slayer. Though I hear you're good at tracking things down. Desperate fathers have been known to do a lot to find their daughters. Unexpected from a witcher. <coughs> I thought your mutations cleansed you of humanity. Stripped you of emotions. You don't need mutations to strip men of their humanity. I've seen plenty of examples. Glad you know who I am. Haven't introduced yourself, though. Graden, witch hunter in the service of His Royal Majesty Radovid of Redania. I'm certain you've heard of us. Rings a bell. If the Bloody Baron sent you to fetch his daughter, you'd best face it. You will fail in your task. I appreciate your concern, but I don't need it. As for tomorrow, she can make her own decisions. Hmm. <coughs> no below you. A killer for hire abandoning his bounty for the good of another. The Hunters and the Church of the Eternal Fire thank you. Where are you gonna take her? Tomorrow must rest. She's had a harrowing experience. When the warmth of the Eternal Fire has restored her strength, we shall see about finding her mother. Hope you know what you're getting into. I've never been more certain. The eternal fire is the best thing that could happen to me. In that case, good luck. Thank you for respecting my choice. Farewell. Now it's just you and me, Cat. We're gonna take on this world together. Nibbles. Well, I'm here, though. Might as well. Oh, hey. Just gonna wait for the quest updates to finish so that the, uh, the prompt will come up. Oh, here we go. Oh. Yep, so, uh, sounds like they're welcoming, welcoming her into the ranks of the Witch Hunters. Well, that's the thing that, uh, we got from the taxman. But yeah, Tamara has kind of fallen in with a bad crowd. The uh, the witch hunters are basically the descendants of the uh, Order of the Flaming Rose, which are descendants of the Order of the White Rose, which was actively in the books, briefly. Geralt once met an asshole, a racist asshole, and uh, taught him a lesson, and he belonged to the Order of the White Rose. And that's more or less about everything that uh, the books had to do with it. The first book turned that into the Order of the Flaming Rose, and had them dedicate themselves to the Church of the Eternal Fire, which was first referenced in a short story referring to Novigrad. Which was all also featured a bunch of racist assholes. 
hence the connection. And yeah, in the first game, the Order of the Flaming Rose is a bunch of racist assholes, whom Geralt dismantles by the end of the story, no matter which path you choose. And, uh... They haven't been doing so well, and you know what? I should stay in Oxenfurt for the time being. Just have a look around. There's not much combat in the middle of a city. Okay. Oh man, sure are plenty of things. Uh, dangerous troll. Monster in Oxenfurt. That sounds dangerous. Beast of the Oxenfurt Forest. That's to the east of Oxenfurt, by the way. <laughs> we'll purchase lecture notes. The University of Oxenfurt is uh, a big deal in the setting, so it is directly a reference to Oxford. Ah, now the local Gwent players put out a notice. Uh, just read through all of that. What can I do with you for? If I ain't got it today, say the word, I'll have it tomorrow. Have you got cards? Wanted to play cards. Yeah, I gotta put in my Dijkstra now that I got one. All right, and yeah, I can use fewer Kedwani Siege Experts. That's That'll be fine. Don't think I'll need two Commander's Horns. Or the Siege Expert. But hey, I got Dijkstra first thing. Oh, and he's got Taller. And I've got a decoy. You can play at this game. Clearly. Anyway, as I was saying. So, uh... Yeah, the Order of the Flaming Rose got dismantled after Geralt killed its uh, commanding officer in the first game. At the end of the first game. It was this whole thing. Oh, so you... You don't want the uh, front row to uh, to play any part, do you? Well, I'm fine with that. I've got cards for every position. And as a matter of fact... Oh, we're doing the whole thing, are we? Alright, fair enough. Hmm. The Commander's Horn can somewhat uh, change the effects there. When every card is worth one, multiplication efforts are exceptionally useful. As a matter of fact, I'm at 13, he's at 7. Let's see how long this can keep going. Wow. And there and he's out of cards. Holy crap. Didn't apparently did not have any clear weather cards. Hmm. I was debating whether or not to do it, but sure. Let's just rub it in. All the way in. But yeah, so. After the events of the first game, essentially, King Radovid accepted all of the former members of the Order of the Flaming Rose and turned them into Witch Hunters. So that the Order of the Witch Hunters not only follows the uh, 
the Eternal Fire as well, they are also still a bunch of racist assholes. Who just so happen to be working for Redania's king. And yeah, there's a bunch of junk here. Some of the junk you can turn into useful stuff. Like that the whole thing about the bivalves. Like if you uh dismantle clams and uh oysters they turn into pearls which are actively worth quite they are actively worth considerably more than than the clams and the oysters and apparently i can just sell the xenovox that rare artifact that we used for one mission and never again And, uh, yeah, some of the junk, uh, when you try and dismantle it, it just turns into nothing valuable, like ashes, for instance. So long. Or else it turns into stuff that I just have plenty of already, so who cares? Hmm. Your cat spreads disease, defeatism, and desertion. Well, apparently, I'm not getting in there. Is to be here a week past. But looks like there is a merchant over here. Yes, an armorer. Someone I can do business with if I can find the right door to get in. No, it's not going to be around here. Oh, apparently he's got one real and one fake door. Greetings. My, my, a witcher. Something tells me I'll finally get something interesting to do. Sure doesn't look like you're short on work. So, this. The Redanian army order. But there's no pleasure in it. One after the other, same thing time and again. No finesse required. Looking to perfect your craft? Of course. Crafting's like plowing a maid. Fall into a rut and well, sure you'll get the job done, but there'll be no hoops, no hollers, no standard ovation. So, got any special requests for me? Help me stay on form. Still talking about armor, aren't we? Aye. What else would it be? Well, would it be Gwent? Let's play. Because I'd like it to be Gwent. Anyway, it doesn't look like uh, any of the card rewards we've got were for. Northern Realms. Nilfgaard deck is uh, fleshing out a bit, but it, it's still not complete enough to use. Anyway, I am... Hmm. I don't need clear weather, but I also don't need a siege expert. At least the siege expert will be marginally useful. Anyway, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before. But uh, I should first talk about this. You see, there are a bunch of neutral cards that can be added to any faction deck. And the Mysterious Elf is one of them. It is the only way for any decks, aside from Northern Realms and Nilfgaard, to get a spy card. As a matter of fact, it's uh, the only way to get a lot of card types into your deck. And, uh, yeah, right now I am stalling for time. But, uh, the mounted character on the right there. That character has what's called the Agility. That means you can play her into either the melee or the ranged area. And yes, I expected that my opponent here would uh, intentionally throw the middle card, or 
in the middle ground, because by doing so, they meet, they get to not spend any cards on that round. And why the hell did you do that? Scoyatel don't have any siege units. That's just an insane waste of a good commander's horn right there. Oh, yeah, bringing back the spy. That's the other way to uh, use spy cards when you're not one of the uh, two decks that has them. Man, this guy's got a pretty good Scoyatel deck. But at the same time, the Scoyatel are one of the worst factions you can play as. Like, it has its advantages, but the AI, for one, never actually uses those advantages. Alright, gotta chance it. Last round here. Oh, man, I've already lost. Damn. Uh, rematch. Let's try that again. Let's play. But yeah, the way you play a Scoyatel deck is to add a whole bunch of weather cards to your deck. Because the advantage of using agility, of having cards with agility, is that you can reinforce one of two different areas. And the reason that matters is if one of those two areas is blanked out, covered in a bad weather card. Um, okay. That's an odd choice to make. Just left, left me flabbergasted for a second there. Okay, you want to invest in the next couple of uh, turns, then go ahead. Huh. Alright, well I got a bunch of siege units and they don't. And that's actually another thing that the Scoyotel can use to their advantage. So, Downpour, the card Downpour can never harm a Scoyotel deck. And so, if you're going up against an enemy deck that has a whole bunch of siege units, like Northern Realms. Well, yeah, exactly, there you go. But then that's why I carry King Clear Weather there. Never mind about all of that. Alright, speaking of bad weather, I think it's about time I used mine. Oh, you got your own Clear Weather deck. Clearweather card. Hmm. In that case, perhaps I should invest more into the third round and allow you to win this one. Also, that did that had a net zero impact. Congratulations there, buddy. And now you're out of cards. But I'm not. So there you go. I win. Again. So, you gotta... well, I got Vatier de Rideau. The name like that, I believe that would have to be a Nilfgaard card. Anyway. Oh, he's got a Master Armor Repair Kit. I actually want that. Doesn't have any uh, Witcher Treasure Hunt maps, though. No more money, either. But hey, I can give him money by buying stuff, and by also by repairing stuff. You know, it's good for one weapon, at least. Aside from that, I could buy some good crafting materials. They'll come in handy down the line. And of course, they also aren't that expensive, which is why I tend to buy the cut gems instead. Those being the most expensive things that they offer, and... There are some recipes that call for them. Although they do tend to 
come later on down the line. Anyway, let's see here. Well, I can also dismantle some stuff. Let me show you that, that thing. Where, yeah, you take seashells, dismantle them, and they become black pearls. And then there's, there's this other thing, I think like just oysters, that dismantle them and they turn into white pearls. And you can dismantle silver stuff and have it turn into silver goods, which is nice. Get some steel ingots, uh, iron, it's useful. And uh, I've also been holding onto these pelts. I'm not sure if I want to sell them or dismantle them into leather goods. Leather goods are pretty useful. And yeah, since this guy's a journeyman, he can make the medium rune stones. Whoops. And the medium glyphs. So it's a good moment to consolidate my inventory, uh, bring it up to the newer, better stuff. Well, looks like I've also got a couple of uh, basic glyph making stuff, so sure. Uh, I tend to use Quen a lot, so let's uh, get some more Quen runes. Glyphs. Alright, runes are for weapons. Glyphs are for armor. Man, I got a lot of these things. And as you can see, to upgrade lesser into regular runes, you just need to... Uh, Two of them, and a decent bit of change. And the enhanced griffin armor is just a bit above my current level. So I'll have to wait before creating that, otherwise I will upgrade the pants right off me. Anyway, to, yeah, to make the greater runes, you do need a master armorer or blacksmith at your disposal. I don't need this much stuff. My weapons and armor don't degrade quite so quickly that I would need uh, all of the various repair kits that I've discovered. Honestly, that's true about the uh, the main game as well. And since I gave this guy a whole bunch of money by... Uh, well, by having him craft a bunch of runestones for me, I figured I'd make some of that back. So by selling him some of the cut gems I've accrued. Of course, I don't really need to, since I uh, got myself a good 100,000 from the first playthrough. I had to do a lot of selling to get it up to that level, though. We don't serve lushes, shavers, caretakers, or students from Philosopher's Hall. Do I look like a, um, any of the people from that list? Doesn't hurt to check, just so it's clear how things stand. So what did they do to you, the students from... Rather not talk on it, all right. What's your poison? You play Gwent? Not with just anybody, and always for high stakes. With you, all right. Hell yeah. I'll play on your terms. This is one of the quest Gwent players. Ooh, yeah. Nice. One of the spy cards. Although he wasn't really a spy for, uh... Nilfgaard. He was more like a double agent with his own personal agenda. It's complicated. I'll talk about it once we eventually get around to him in one of the, uh... One of the book reviews I'm doing. Anyway, I... Yeah, I found pretty much uh, everything I wanted to from that. Wait, actually, the guy with the big hat. That's the guy with the uh, the big uh, Stefan Skellis. Yeah, that's the real crazy dude. And speaking of crazy, man, we're going at it. Spy deck versus spy deck. All you do is trade spies for the first few turns. Oh 
like so. So, might as well put what I've been given to good use. Oh, and he's going to keep on going. Okay. Maybe I should just pass. Let him spend some more cards. Uh, bulking up my side and then making up for it. Or, or just giving up. It's taking his uh, card advantage into the next round. But, in exchange, I have full license to push my hand as hard as I can. Because if I win this round, I win it all. And that just won't do. Oh, really? Oh, and yeah, he's... Uh, he's also got the uh, Nilfgaard Emir card that... Uh, oh, for crying out loud, he's still not done. He's also got the Emir card that uh, cancels out my leader ability. So I can't get rid of that cold snap twice. And he's got a pretty good Nilfgaard deck. Let's see what happens here. Because I do have some uh, mid-range units. And yep, we got a full weather effect. Now, hero cards are immune to the weather. But... Hmm. Yeah. Might just be worth it to... Uh, Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, just clear the air. Give this another shot. Oh, and of course. I should have gone for it. Should have played the horn on the front row. As it is, I can still catch up a bit here. Oh, for... <laughs> he had all of them. All three. There are three of those, uh... Restoration cards. Damn it. Perhaps you should come back when you've got a better deck. Or when you learn to play. Piss off. We're doing this. Oh, I remember you. What'll it be? A round of... Why not? I'll play on you. Alright, so I do need the clear weather because he cancelled my leader ability. And let's see. Yeah, swap out my two most uninteresting cards. Maybe I got lucky and he doesn't have all of his spies. I mean, it's, look, it's looking up on that uh, on that side of things so far. I've got enough mid and back units here that a uh, little cold snap won't hurt me too badly. Oh, it does have some spies. But hey, I've got my resurrection units. That's actually another one of the uh, Nilfgaard decks strong suits. Is that Northern Realms has one card that can resurrect used up cards, but Nilfgaard has a whole ton of cards that can do that. All right, let's see what you can do here. Apparently, not much. Damn, he got a terrible hand. I mean, seriously. This is just embarrassing after that first round. And yeah, I am just rubbing it in here. 
And yeah, it looks like there are some cards worth resurrecting, so yeah, let's do this again. Bring out some more back row cards. Yeah, I don't I don't have to do all of this. I want to. I'm taking vengeance for the last round. I don't like losing, but that don't mean I don't do it with grace. The card and the prize are yours. You've been playing a while. Got to know where I can find some interesting cards. In Novograd, there's Oliver the Innkeeper. He plays, though he's far beneath my level. Closer, in Velen, there's the barkeep at the inn at the crossroads. I think I played that guy already. Oh, Yennefer of Vengerberg. That's another one of those neutral cards, and it's a hero neutral card, no less. And one who has the resurrection ability. You may have noticed. Both times he played it. I think the game cheats. At least to some extent. With that in mind. The card that the uh, character would give you in exchange for winning is more likely to be played. Or more likely to be in their hand. And that was the barber shop just there. Don't need to go to the barber. Perfectly fine with Geralt's look right now. Oh, we got another marker. And yes, you can't go through in from the back either. I don't need to hear the whole song and dance again. Instead, I can just fast travel. Hmm. Yeah, back to the inn at the crossroads. I think I played this guy, but maybe I didn't. Because normally they don't mention players that you've beaten already. But he's not in at the moment. Oh, now he is. Okay, that was weird. Or he'll end like the last man who ruled Crow's Perch. Hmm. They say you play cards. They don't speak idly then. Times are tough, and rare cards are often worth more than a fistful of gold. So, will you play? Let's. Alright, so I apparently had to beat Skellen first. And yeah, let's just put her straight in. Go to Yennefer. Get rid of that last damn, uh... That, that's the wrong thing. Get rid of that last damn Ked Winnie siege expert. Don't need any of that. Oh, that's, that's a nice starter. Don't have any special cards, though. Oh, maybe I'll get some, though. Got my two spies out. Oh, and my two blue stripes commandos. Three Blue Stripes Commandos. Hell yeah. Don't know why he forfeited this first game, though. That's a bit weird. Hmm. Can't beat him with one card. But I might want to save that for a bit more of a strategic play. And for that matter, uh, if I spend my frontline cards, I'll get a little bit more strategy since I won't have to worry about uh, frontline issues. Oh, what's that? You want to use a spy against me? Well, I got my decoys out. And that is the most worthless Emir special ability. Right there. Oh, yep. Yeah, uh, making the resurrection play there. But, I can take advantage of that. Just stay one step ahead. Oh, investing in the front row, are you? Well, now might be the perfect time, then. Ok, 
because I've got a handful of siege units and you don't. Why do you play that on the second row? Would have made a much bigger difference in the front row. Whoop. Ah, nah, you should have played Scorch last round. Back when you had uh, three six cards to blow up. Hmm. Is it? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Go big or go home. Oh, what's that? More bad weather? Not today. Okay, yeah, there's there's no way I'm coming back from that. But hey, I did force him to spend both of his uh, commander horns. Which would have come in handy just now. That's another strength of the Nilfgaardian Empire deck, by the way, is that a lot, they have a lot of high-value cards. Individual cards that are worth 10 points. But they aren't that useful if they've only got the one. I must admit, I scoffed and lost. Well, stupidity's got its price. My prize card's yours. Nice. Menno Cohorn. And there's one more innkeeper I can play, but they're in Novigrad, and I'm not going there just yet. Instead, now that I do have some news to bring back to the Bloody Baron, start to appraise him of what's been going on. Get a bit more inform. What the heck? Horse, what are you doing this time? Come on, Roach. You never stopped at this point before. Ugh. Well, you can make your own way past that invisible barrier, but you can't take me on your back when you're doing so. All right, then. Enough of all of that. Let's see here. Come on now. Anything else on fire this time? Ask a service of the Witcher, the Pelamost. A witcherly service, that's to say. What do you need? Tell me. A man who fears no evil, the Pella needs. Forefather's Eve is nigh. We've rights to conduct. Wandering souls to emerge. Damned souls, too. We've the circle to protect from these wretches. Why hold the ritual at all? At times men die choking with regret. At times death takes them before they've tasted any bitterness in life. These poor souls, unfulfilled, cannot leave this veil of tears. Their spirits wander midst the living, must be judged, sent on their way. This we do. On Forefather's Eve. What'll I get out of it? Witches do naught for free, this the Pella knows. Not to fear, how to reward one for their aid, this too the Pella knows. Seems like you could use a Witcher, so yeah, I'll help. You'd not refuse, the Pella knew. The time's come to gather the folk. Across the lake we must journey, to Fike Isle. There in the circle of stones we shall meet. The sooner we resolve this, the better. Best do it tonight at midnight. All right. Oh, even more stuff. Remember me? Stable hand pulled you out of the fire. We'll never forget that. Here, I'm grateful. Grateful in currency. Thanks, mate. You saved my sorry ass. 
Thought I'd roast for sure. And hey, stable's not doing too good, but nothing else is on fire. I beg you. I'm innocent, I swear. Guess it was profit. Let me order attack the merchants then. Stealing the goods and blinding those poor bastards. Make the baron sad with you. Now, I'll have them stick a hot poker in your eyes. <laughs> Our boys wanted to take some wenches for a roll in the hay, but the local shit pickers stood up to them. So they bound a few of the bumpkins together, then burned them alive in a barn. Yeah. What a place. Witcher. A word, please. Believe we've not had the pleasure. They call me the sergeant. Left over from my army days, you understand. When me and Philip, meaning the Baron, served under a Temerian banner. Wanted to ask you about something. What is it? That night, when the Baron ordered everyone to lock their doors, stay inside. What did you and the Baron do? Gotta ask the Baron about that. Speaking of which, know where he is. Garden. Spends a lot of time sitting there of late. Drunk. No. Don't drink, don't eat. Just sit. Huh. Might have actually meant something for once. Reading old love letters from Anna. There you are. See the hollyhock there? The violet blooms. Brought the plants here from Nazaire. Anna had read some story. Insisted on having them. Spent hours tending to them. Trimming, pruning. She was so content at that. And them, the frilly ones. Called birds of paradise in Zeracania. But Tamara called them dragons of paradise. She adored them. Damn shame I'll never learn which blooms would please Daya most. Though it's good to know her spirit's free. Your loss. It must hurt. Bad. But there wasn't anything we could do. No. Not now. Not anymore. It was too late. That was clear. Should have acted earlier. Taking them all from this damned villain. In this hole. This reesty mire. Nothing could go right here. Got some information about your family. You've learned something? Well, let's go inside. It's a bit chilly out. So it was Anna's garden. Any news for me? Your daughter's in Oxenford. What the blazes? She all right? In good health? Safe? Why haven't you brought her back? Never offered to do that. How do you know she's safe? You see her at least? I saw her. We talked. She said I could tell you she's safe. When will she come home? And that she's not coming back. She's not to return. But I've prepared all for her. Her rooms are white. I sent away for new pantoblas from Toussaint. How can she not come back? You know damn well why she doesn't want to come back. She's not coming back, period. And I don't blame her. I wouldn't want to return to a home like this either. Ah, horse bugger, you blind. I know what you think already. You've no need to repeat it. I've not been a good father, I know, but perhaps it's not too late. Can always try. Wouldn't count on succeeding, though. I've nothing to lose. Very well. You were to find them both. What of Anna? Learned anything? Nothing yet, but I'm on her trail. Well, what are you waiting for? For you to tell me about Siri, like we agreed. <sighs> Fine. A word once given. When Siri was on the mend, we took her out on a hunt. 
Thought a bit of galloping would warm up her limbs, gone stiff from so much bed rest. That lass of yours, pure luck in the flesh. To hunt down a wild boar that size, why, worthy of one of King Faltest's feasts, were he still among the living. Sere, come! Our haunt should be yours as I see it. Oh, you done well, lass. Not bad. Not bad at all. But who goes boar hunting with a sword? No bow at hand, no spear. My sword was all I had. <laughs> well, you brandished it beautifully. Where'd they teach you that, anyway? Hmm. A little here, a little there. Not surprising, given you wander the world alone. Not alone no more. She's in the company now. That's right. You're a member of the company. We're drinking together, killed a wild boar as a pack, you might say. But we've no notion how you arrived here. A woman in a man's garb, razor on her back. Who exactly are you? You a mercenary? Let's say I go about my business. And when there's coin to be earned, I don't readily turn it down. I've always held with the world how it is today. Lasses ought to know how to fend for themselves. All right, all right. A woman could swing a sword, I've knowed one, but never seen a lady mount anything but a cock proper. All tipsy on horseback, nothing strange on account they bloody mount them sideways. Perhaps you'd care to wager? Think you can outrun me on an horse? <laughs> Naturally. What's the stake? Black Mare. The one in the stable. Oh, that won't do at all. Well, that's an awfully gloomy face. Too much of a coward to race a woman. The horse is mine. To race the Baron himself. I'd consider it an honor. <laughs> oh, that'd be a sight to behold. Would it ever? Done. But if I win, I take your sword. Agreed. I'd not drink any more this night. You'll want your head about you. We start at daybreak. And as we've previously established, that sword is something special to her. So she's pretty confident about her winning. And anyway, side saddle was only invented because women's skirts became huge during a specific period of history. Day dawns. Ready? As ever. First one to the tower. Man chop! Come on, Siri, don't you embarrass us? Oh, crap. Hit shift too many times and it brought up a stupid auto shift click thing. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. Just interrupted the game a bit and was responsible for that odd little beep. And yeah, it's, it's all because you have to double tap shift in order to gallop on horseback. Anyway, it looks like the Baron is actually riding the uh, black mare that he uh, put up. And the horse is already out of stamina because it doesn't have all of the extra stuff. But we have also reached the end of the race. Your wind, not woman. Worthy of the best horse. The mare is yours. Thank you. What? Another chance to win. She screamed like a mad woman. In an instant, all had forgotten the wager. Every man ran to save his skin, even were he to break his neck. And they make it? Some, aye. Others were not so fortunate. But what happened then? 
I must say, Witcher, seen a lot, but nothing like this. Never. Uh-oh. I know that look. You're a fast learner. You'll know the rest once you find my wife. Working on it. And making piss-poor progress. They split up. Hadn't considered that possibility before. But don't worry. I'll find Anna, too. So long. But... Getting back onto her trail, we'll have to wait until next time.